So next, let's talk about God of High School. Okay. I'm going to go first because I know you got a lot to say. I really love this fifth episode. I thought it was amazing. I thought Mappa was showing off. Um, It all came together for me. I got the emotional moments. And also, I just want to highlight that the music is very similar, especially when they were fighting, um, uh, when Mori and, and Dewi, Dewi, or Dewi were fighting, um, the like climactic fight scene. The music was almost exact, not exactly the same, but the use of the string instruments was so similar to the strings in You Say Run from My Hero Academia. And you'll know what I'm talking about. If you just type in You Say Run into like, you know, YouTube or whatever, and you listen to it, and as soon as you hear the strings, you're going to be like, yes, I know that. Like, it's it's the quintessential My Hero Academia, like, shit's about to go down song. That one. Um, uh, if this The instrumental music for this, for the God of High School fight, right during that moment, was so similar to it. And the thing was, it evoked the same feeling of just like, bitch, this is happening. Like, this is this is a moment. Like, this is defining, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I love the animation, especially when they went into like the um the like drawing, like calligraphy style, like fight scenes, et cetera, et cetera. I will say I was a little bit confused when he learned the blue dragon move. But we didn't get... I'm, they're probably going to explain how he learned it. But the blue dragon move just came out of nowhere. Because I was thinking during this fight that Mori was going to somehow learn how to manifest the, like, JoJo or the stands or whatever the shit that's going on. That the other people that they've encountered so far have been showing. And he didn't. But the blue dragon thing came out. And um, also, the other character was talking about, like, tiger cubs. Don't know what the fuck that is. Of course, I'm expecting him to explain it. And... Uh, Overall, like, I'm actually happy the friend died. I know that sounds really bad. But I thought that was a necessary thing to move the plot forward, especially with Dewey. And I'm, I, I'm, I like where it's going. Um, me being a petty person at heart, I kind of wish they had made up with him so fast. I kind of wish it kind of had been a little bit more, like, you know, you still, you, you still fucked her over, man. Like, you know, we can't really fuck with, like, you can't really fuck with you like that for a little bit longer. But whatever. It's it's anime, happy slappy, you know, friendship has to eventually overcome in some form or fashion. So they were all cool by the end, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I'm all, I don't even think that's the end of the tournament for Dewi and Mari, like at all. I feel like they're probably going to do like a loser, a, a loser's seed or some shit like that. And they're going to come back into the play. Who knows? Um. I guess it's your turn now. <laughs> no, I really like the episode as well. I mean, I'm a, a, a manga reader, so I oh, am. I also want to say, sorry. No um, I really enjoyed the um, the camera perspectives during the fight. Yes, like the hand to hand combat. That shit was just like it was. It what it was almost like I was like right there. Like it was just. It was oh, it was like you were experiencing the the fight in first person. Yeah, they did the um the uh Rocky cam or the I guess the the Creed cam. Yeah, Re- really love that part about it. Okay. Yeah, there was a lot of like really neat stuff that they included as like um just presentation wise. But as a as a mono reader, like I am familiar with where the story goes. So like my notes mm-hmm. on the episode were okay. Now we get the Daiwi versus Mori fight. It's weird that Yumira doesn't seem that bummed about losing. And then what are the rules? But at the at the <laughs> end of it all, my note to myself was, this is where the real plot starts. So the sort of like bigger overarching story sort of picks up at this point in the manhwa, which is, this is around like chapter 39, 40-ish. And, okay. and anyone who's familiar with the manhwa knows that there are 450 plus chapters out there. So there's a whole lot of story that is you know, floating around and, and starts to uh, assert itself in the direction of, like, what's going on. Um, as far as, like, visually, I thought the episode was r- a return to form of how good um, it, it had been in, like, the first couple of episodes or so, especially the standout still being episode two. Um, my, I was, I, I didn't have a lot of, like, direct recollection of, like, how certain fights played out so like i was a little 
bummed that the uh, fight against a capoeira user was not, you know, particularly dynamic. Um, yeah, it was over in less than a minute. Yeah, and I remember liking that. And I'm this is all again memory. Uh, I remember liking that that piece, and it was one of the things that w- had gotten me into it was that they started to show off all these like different fighting styles and stuff, and it was really cool. Um, however, after watching the episode, which I will give a, a high mark and just a, a good recommend anyway, I started to get a feeling that I couldn't quite put my finger on until I went back and reread the first. Uh, skip, skipping like the first five, but basically the, the first 30 or 35 chapters. And s- what had been a little nagging thought in the back of my mind was confirmed. And that thought was, they are making some choices to remove um, things that I thought were very critical to establishing what makes God of High School very, if not unique, uh, makes it stand out and solidifies a lot of the stuff that they show you um, in the action. So in the first couple episodes, I thought it was a good choice to shift a lot of the character building moments to, instead of front loading all of them before the action happens, just like get right into the action, show off some cool stuff. And then as each character reaches sort of a emotional moment or a high point in their story, go back and teach you something about how they got there. I thought it was a great yeah. choice. I think it cut a bunch of um, dead weight material down and, overall really cool but we're at the point now where they have summarized about like 40 chapters somewhere close to 40 chapters in five episodes and one of the things that has clearly been cut which i really appreciated was the little dives into the actual both real world and fantastical fighting styles themselves right we get a little bit of a mention of like uh especially the beginning of some of these fights like they'll introduce the fighter and they say oh this person uses pro wrestling or this person uses tai tai chi this person uses full ta- full contact karate and then of course mori's is renewal style taekwondo and you get a mention of that and the way that they move around the ring and the moves they do definitely are evocative of whatever style that they come from the problem yeah. is that they're not putting the kind of energy and attention into explaining the fighting styles as they are into the the backstories of the characters such that when you finally get clashes between non-jobbers so when you get mori versus uh daiwi and it is yeah. more than just you know their personal stories running together it's the contest of their martial arts very little is communicated about anything about those martial arts and so daiwi gets boiled down to he's got four moves and the last one is a blue dragon and Mori gets boiled down to he seems to be able to copy some moves and he's got a triple kick. And the unfortunate part is that while in the Mon- Manwa they make a lot of, or the author makes a, a big point as to showing how the matchups of these different moves and abilities plus the characters' motivations and their grit and their strength play into the result, the outcome of the fight. Like we all pretty much know main character dude's going to win you know, second main character dude is going to get beat up and lose. But like knowing and seeing uh, what or understanding what you're watching, especially when it comes to like a like a, a, a battle shonen, is actually mm-hmm. very important. And I, a lot is being lost as a result of not putting that kind of energy into the you know the the actual like martial art style you know yeah. that underpins each character in the show and. From now on, when they don't do that, I'm going to give that give the show a demerit, you know, regardless of how good it looks, regardless of other things. I think they're doing exceptionally well, and I think the animation in this episode was exceptional. Um, they're just going to get a, a a demerit for that because it is a uh, it's a choice. It's a directorial choice what to include, what not to include, and I think it, it's a choice that actually harms the show and makes it feel a lot less um weighty impactful. and impactful than it otherwise could be i definitely agree with the not getting the explanation for the styles because i remember you saying that was one of the the drawing points for the series is how they break everything down and then how you see it in action and for us to get to this like huge climax battle and also for mori like i feel like the mori triple kick 
would mean more if I knew more behind like, you know, what it took for him to get to that point. Is that a really difficult move to do? Um, uh, what style of Taekwondo is that based off of? And, you know, is that actually like physically possible <laughs> for actual human? Like things like that. And we haven't gotten that so far. And you bringing that up makes it, it, it doesn't lower the bar for me, but it kind of just be like, oh yeah, you know what? I kind of would like that too. But do you think that they're probably going to add that in at a later date? Or are they just going to keep going this route? I, I don't know. I was willing and I'm still willing to um, allow them some space to reorganize the material that they're adapting. My guess is that if it's anything like Tower of God, they're going to be adapting about 90 or so chapters, 90 to 100 chapters for this first season, which is a lot. Uh -huh. I mean, frankly, that's just a lot of material and a lot of stuff does have to be cut. Um, or moved around and also like Tower of God there are some dramatic choices in what is removed so like in the the directorial choice in Tower of God was they took the um, about five to ten chapters in the from the very beginning of the series which detailed Rachel's entrance into the tower and moved them to the end of the as a reveal they use those as like her motivations and her little backstory as a reveal for the most dramatic moment of the season to close it out so that was a you know like i'm willing to give you know this adaptation space to kind of do its own thing and i'm not here to say that like oh you've got to follow exactly what's in the manga, otherwise it's garbage no not at all um if they find a way to work that in later or they remix it and uh and communicate that information you know whether it's visually or some other way or they just don't think it's necessary i'm i'm willing to give it that space um and not be overly critical but my contention is there's just a lot that's actually being lost in the action itself like in the their presentation of it and if they're not going to have the budget to do what they were doing in uh the second episode um yeah. if they're if it, you know like just wow you with like a lot of the the physicality of that animation, which can communicate a lot of what would be text or just description otherwise, mm -hmm. then I think it does take a, away from what's going on. And for anyone who thinks that I'm just like, you know, ranting and raving like a lunatic, on your favorite service or, or app of choice, if you're an anime-only watcher, go and read chapters 33 through about 36 or 37 of uh, God of High School, which covers most of the events that are in um, episode five. And look at the paneling, look at the way in which the fight choreography is displayed there and how it's explained um, visually. And then decide for yourself whether or not the, what you got out of that episode is actually representative of how really cool it could have been with just a little bit of context. Hmm. Well, they've got they've got a little bit over half a season left, so you know. Yeah, and I'm not I'm not I'm not crapping on what was there. What was there still looked really really good, and I think it worked. And if you are not familiar with anything else, then I don't think you know you'll feel like you got gypped in any. Oh no, not at all. Way. Because before before speaking to you about it, I was like, "Bitch, that was amazing. I love it." <laughs> Yeah, I think the general consensus is that it's a good series and this was a good episode, and I, I concur. It's a great series, and this was a great episode. I just, I just want that little extra seasoning to take it from you know what is something visually great to something that stands out and is memorable for a long, long time. That's all. Mm. 